What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm back with a video, where this time we're going to investigate who was the most clutch player in the NBA for the 2021 season. And when talking about being clutch, it's always a big time factor for the all-time great players. I know fans, they love to debate who is the most clutch player in the NBA, who wants the big time shots, who embraces the moment, which players get passive, which players choke. Those things always matter when debating players and ranking the all-time greats. When we're talking about being clutch, there really is no definitive criteria by thing this video. I do a pretty good job describing what it means to be a clutch time player. And the main criteria I'm going to use is fourth quarter scoring, clutch time scoring, and who makes the big time shots in the playoffs. Those three factors will help us decide who is the most clutch player in the NBA. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. So the first thing I want to do is look at fourth quarter scoring in the regular season. I think the stat category is fairly important as being great in the fourth quarters for an extended period can show how great a player is in the big time moments. And we're looking at the fourth quarter scoring for the year with a tie for first with Tatum and Giannis at 7.5. We had James Harden at 7.4, De'Aaron Fox and Bradley Beal both at 7.3, and Zach Levine at 7.2. So all these players for the most part had great fourth quarter scoring years, but the two players that stood out in my mind were both Tatum and Giannis who were first and second. Now also one thing you have to look at is clutch time scoring, and NBA.com defines this as the last 5 minutes of game within 5 points. Not a perfect metric, but it does a pretty good job of describing what being clutch is. When we're looking at these stats, in first place, you have Dame Lillard at 4.8, you have SJ and Bradley Beal at 4.7, DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine at 4.4, and James Harden at 4.3. And keep in mind these stats are in the last 5 minutes of game within 5 points. So averaging nearly 5 points in this time period is highly impressive. And if you're someone like Dane, shooting over 50% that is also highly impressive for the clutch time situations. Now finally, let's move on to the playoffs where it really matters. And we look at 4th quarter scoring in the postseason, Kevin Durant averaged 8.4 points per game, that was the most in the NBA, Tatum averaged 8.3, John Morant 8.2, Trey Young 7.9, and Donovan Mitchell and Giannis both at 7.7. .7. And out of all these players, we only had three who averaged over eight points, that being KD, Tatum, and John Moran. And out of those players, KD was the most efficient. And I also want to note Giannis in the fourth quarters averaged 7.7, .7, shooting nearly 60% in those situations. So once again, this list is highly impressive and features some of the best players in the fourth quarters of the playoffs. Now narrowing that scope, let's look at clutch time scoring in the playoffs, once again last five minutes within five points. And at first, once again, we have Kevin Durant at 5.3, narrowly edging out Dame by a few percentage points. In third place, you have Giannis at 4.8. In fourth and fifth place at 4.3, you have Jokic and Trey Young. And in sixth place, you have Chris Middleton at 4.2. Now the player from this list that stands out is Dame Lillard, averaging 5.3 on 60% shooting, which is pretty ridiculous for a guard. I mean, even Giannis in the clutch doesn't shoot that high, and he takes many layups and dunks compared to Dame, pulls it from deep on a regular basis. Now the last thing I want to look at is which player in the NBA makes the most big time shots. And for this, I look at the last 24 seconds of game time go ahead shots in the playoffs as well as the regular season. When you look at this list, you have Damon first place with 5 makes on 60% shooting, Tatum also with 5 makes on 50% shooting, DeAndre Russell with 4 makes on 57% shooting, Luka also with 4 makes on 50% shooting, and Malcolm Brogdon and Colin Sexton both of three makes a piece. So out of this entire list, you have Tatum and Dame at the top, and Dame once again is shooting over 60% in the clutch time situations. Now out of all that data, I think three players stood out in my eyes, that being Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant, and Dame Lillard. And I think these players this year are the three most clutch players in the NBA. And the first player I want to look at is Jason Tatum. And if you look at his ranks in the NBA in fourth quarter scoring, he was first, clutch time scoring 22nd, 4th quarter playoff scoring 2nd, clutch time playoff scoring 24th, and with game time go ahead shots, he ranked tied for 1st. So obviously very impressive numbers from Tatum, and he's one of the best go-to players in the clutch for the Boston Celtics. The one thing I would look at specifically in the clutch time scoring category, he does rank lower compared to the other elite players, ranking outside the top 20 for both those categories. But still Tatum this year was amazing in the clutch. Now looking at Dame Lillard, our 2nd candidate, he's also very impressive, in terms of 4th quarter scoring, he ranked 7th, clutch time scoring 1st, playoff 4th quarter scoring 10th, clutch time playoff scoring 2nd, and game time go ahead shots, he ranked 1st. 
and on this entire list, he's the only player in the top 10 for all five of those categories. And when it comes to clutch time scoring, Dame excels being first and second. And for fourth quarter scoring, he's also amazing being the top 10 for both those categories. So if you're looking for consistency in the clutch, Dame Lillard definitely provides that as he ranks in the top in nearly every category. Now the last player we have is Kevin Durant. And looking at his ranks, he ranked ninth in fourth quarter scoring, 14th in clutch time scoring, first in fourth quarter playoff scoring, and first in playoff clutch time scoring. And he was 29th in go ahead or game tying shots. And I think the case for KD, being the best clutch time player is in the playoffs. He ranked first in both fourth quarter scoring and clutch time scoring and he drastically improved compared to the regular season. And I think the debate for the most clutch player in the NBA is between KD and Dame Lillard. So let's further investigate who's actually the most clutch player in the NBA, taking into account the playoffs. So KD in the big time playoff games, in game five versus Milwaukee, he had 49 points, including 20 in the fourth quarter. In game seven, Brooklyn did lose, but in that game KD had 48 points, the most ever in game seven, including 15 in the fourth quarter. And in games five through seven in that series, he averaged an absurd 43 points per game, 12.3 boards, and 6.3 assists. And the one knock on KD would be how he played in the overtime in game seven, where he didn't make a single shot, and he airballed the potential game winner. And with no context, that is bad, but in that game, Kevin Durant played the entire game, and he was gassed towards the end, and he did everything he could for that Brooklyn team. So even with that airball game winner, KD, in the playoffs, was extremely clutch and he performed great in the crunch time moments. Now looking at Dame in the playoffs in game 3 versus the Nuggets, he had 55 points, including 37 in the fourth quarter in overtime, which included two clutch threes to save that game for Portland, even though they would lose in double OT. And in games 5 and 6 of that series, with the season on the line, Dame Lillard averaged 41.5 once a game, 11.5 assists, and 5.0 boards. And very similar to KD, he did everything he could for that Blazers team, but unfortunately, they lost that series. Now with that being said, I've made my case for a bunch of players. The two players I think are at the top of this list when it comes to clutch time play are KD and Dame Lillard. And if I had to pick one as the most clutch player in the NBA, I think there's two ways you can look at it. If I need a big time game, a big time performance, I would go with KD over Dame very slightly. If I need a big time shot with a game on the line, I would take Dame over everyone in the league. At the end of the day, it comes down to how you define being clutch. Is the big time shot late in the game, or is it playing great the entire game for 48 minutes? Depending on how you think, that's how you define being clutch. And in my personal opinion, I think how you play late in games matters a little bit more than how you play in the first quarter, or even the third quarter, as the crunch time moments really show who's the most clutch player in the league. In those clutch time moments, Ken Durant ranked first in clutch time scoring, as well as fourth quarter scoring. Like I said before, Dame Lillard hit the big time shots for his team when it mattered most. So if I had to pick one player for the 2021 season as the most clutch player in the big time moments, I would actually go with Dame Lillard as the most clutch player. As when it came to clutch time scoring the playoffs, he averaged 5.3 on 60% shooting. He was just decimal points below KD. When it came to shooting wise, he was drastically ahead of Kevin Durant by nearly 20%. And also when it came to the big time moments, he was first in game time or go ahead shots. So for the 2021 season, I think Dame Lillard was the most clutch player in the NBA and Kevin Durant is a close second. And one name that hasn't been featured in this video is LeBron James. And I know many of his fans think he's extremely clutch, which he is in his own right. But for this year, his numbers were on par with guys like Dame, Tatum, or KD. As you can see on your screen, for superstar players or even all-star players, who is in the middle of the pack making a clutch time scoring or fourth quarter scoring. So once again, I'll restate, Dame Lillard was the most clutch player in the NBA the 2021 season. And with that being said, let me know your guys' thoughts. Who do you think is the most clutch player in the NBA and who do you want to take the big time shots? So as always, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.